Back in the day, if you wanted a top performing television, there was arguably only one choice, Sony. And when I was younger, if I walked into any house and saw a Sony TV sitting in a giant wooden entertainment center, I was impressed. I was so impressed that when it came time for me to start buying my own TVs with my own grown up money, there was only one choice, Sony. But since the advent of affordable flat panel displays, mostly from the likes of Vizio, Hisense, and others, the go-to recommendation to simply buy a Sony has sort of faded. But when the opportunity came for us to review the X950H, well, I wasn't gonna pass that up because if you believe everything you read on the internet, the X950H seems to be a return to form for Sony. So sit back, relax, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, because today we are taking a real good look at the Sony X950H 4K Smart TV. <laughs> The X950H comes in a variety of sizes, starting at 49 inches on up to 85. Now we are reviewing the 65 inch model here today. Now the 950 is not Sony's entry level full array backlit LED. That distinction falls to the 900H. The 950 falls somewhere in the middle, but this is bound to make it very popular for a wide range of users. The 950 is a true 4K TV that utilizes a full array LED backlighting scheme and also features Sony's X1 Ultimate processor. Now this processor is found in a lot of Sony's higher end TVs, not to mention their OLED displays. Now the 950 also features local dimming and this is a way for the television to enhance its contrast, not to mention black level rendering, hopefully bringing it closer to the standard set by our 2020 television of the year, which was Sony's A8H OLED. But all of this is happening behind the scenes because you're going to interact with this TV via its Android TV operating system. And this operating system makes it compatible with Google Assistant, Alexa, as well as Apple AirPlay. The 950 is an HDR compatible display. It has support for Dolby Vision as well as HDR10 and HLG. It also has ARC as well as EARC support and that gives it the ability to play back Dolby Atmos as well as DTS-X soundtracks. Now there are four HDMI inputs, though sadly they are limited to HDMI 2.0. And for you gamers out there, you're not gonna find certain features like variable refresh rate with the Sony. The X950H is a good looking television, though admittedly it doesn't look that different from other Sony flat panel TVs or even Sony flat panels of old. Still, the build quality, the fit and finish is there and you definitely can sense it as you start to handle the TV. But then you get to the included feet. Now, Sony tends to show this TV with the feet mounted out towards the outer edges. And if you do this, you may find it difficult to find furniture that will accommodate this TV in sizes larger than say 65 inches. That is, unless you're willing to really splurge on some quality furniture. Thankfully, you have the flexibility of mounting the feet more towards the center. However, you need to know, no matter how you mount the feet on this particular Sony, it is quite wobbly. Also, if you mount the feet inward towards the center, you may find it difficult to place a soundbar either between the feet themselves or just under the Sony in general. We use the Sony exclusively in our brand new Small Spaces film set where we connected it to two different soundbars, the Samsung Q950T and the smaller Samsung S60T. We ultimately settled on the 60T because it fit nicely between the Sony's feet. We connected our PS4 for some gaming tests, which we're gonna talk about later. And if you want any information on our associated equipment or the furniture found in our Small Spaces film set, links as always are in the description below. Out of the box, the 950 ships in its standard picture profile. Now, standard is loads better than the usual eco or vivid mode that a lot of TVs ship in, but, the standard mode still isn't that accurate, nor is it the brightest. So for best results out of the box, the two best profiles to look at are cinema and custom, with custom being the best choice of the two in terms of accuracy out of the box. In its custom picture profile with no additional adjustments made, 
I measured the Sony at around 450 nits of brightness. Now, obviously you can get that number up a little bit higher by adjusting some of the settings, specifically, you know, dynamic backlighting, brightness, contrast, things like that. And if you do that, you can get a brightness reading around 600 or so nits. But out of the box in its factory default custom mode, you can expect a light output of about 450 to 500 nits, depending on your particular TV. The Sony's peak brightness, on the other hand, can be achieved by either using a different picture profile or by adjusting some of the settings within the custom preset. And if you do this, you can expect a peak brightness of around a thousand nits, but I'm going to be honest with you, it's not the most pleasing. On the flip side, its black level detail is very good, measuring 0.0035 nits. Now that's not exactly absolute black, it's not OLED black, but it puts the Sony in good company alongside the Hisense H9G, TCL6 series, Samsung Q70T, and it even puts it a little bit ahead of our LG 8K smart TV, at least out of the box. What's even more impressive, in the custom picture profile, with no further adjustments needed to its grayscale or color, the Sony's grayscale and color accuracy is very, very good. I measured a delta E or margin of error of 3.4, and if you watch this channel, that you know that a delta E of three or less starts to meet the criteria of calibrated out of the box. So 3.4 is nothing to lose sleep over. And honestly, if it were me, if I were buying this Sony today, I likely would just put it in its custom preset, not touch anything else, well, apart from maybe maybe adjusting a little bit of the local dimming, but honestly, just do those two things and then just move on with my life. Speaking of local dimming, the Sony is one of the better TVs with respect to local dimming that I have encountered in 2020. And when viewing Dolby Vision content, it's very responsive and I detected no flickering or sudden changes in brightness when watching content like Michael Bay's Six Underground, which is in Dolby Vision on Netflix. And when viewing test patterns meant to tax local dimming zones, well, the, the Sony appeared almost pixel perfect with blooming kept to an absolute minimum. Though strangely enough, or maybe interestingly enough, when viewing real world content, specifically David Fincher's new film, Mank, which is also in Dolby Vision, I actually did see a little bit more blooming. But it was specifically around the white type against a stark black background. So it, it does seem like the blooming may be associated with HDR content or if you have your brightness or backlighting settings set too high. In keeping with Mank, it is possible for the 950 to achieve OLED-like black levels, you know, those inky rich blacks that we have all come to love by choosing the right or more aggressive backlighting settings, but doing this definitely crushes the image quite a bit, which I don't always prefer. So to get a little bit more or more natural contrast, more delineation in the mid values and highlights, I did have to choose a low backlighting setting and this caused the blacks to kind of wash out just a little bit. And this definitely did not help with off axis viewing. Moving away from black and white content, colors through the Sony are first rate. Everything, including my own native 4K content that I have full control over how it looks, looks bang on through the Sony with respect to color. And the Sony just doesn't seem to really put an emphasis on any one hue over the next, which is something that plagues a lot of televisions, and yet the Sony is just very balanced when it comes to color. Skin tones are especially natural and organic, even in the face of some pretty hefty stylistic color grading. One of the other notable aspects about the 950's performance is it's almost 8K-like edge fidelity. I don't think that I have ever encountered a TV that is just inherently sharp the way that the Sony is. And it's not an artificial sharpness either, one that has a lot of edge artifacts and things like that. No, lines, detail, textures, they're all just so crispy. Now, if you're a gamer, you're gonna probably wanna pay extra close attention to this next part because while I enjoyed gaming on the Sony, it wasn't my favorite. The game mode is punchy and vibrant, and I liked that, especially with HDR games, and I did find the input lag to be a non-issue, but 
the Sony was very prone to, well, stuttering. When playing fast action games like Uncharted 4 and carrying out very action intensive moves like grappling, and then you've got Uncharted 4's really kind of dynamic camera, the Sony was prone to stuttering quite a bit. It was intermittent, I was able to play through it, nevertheless, it did bother me, so I have to imagine if you're a hardcore gamer, you're gonna be way less forgiving. Moving on to the 950s sound quality, Sony really does like to tout the sound of their televisions, and I understand when it comes to their OLEDs, but I really wouldn't call much attention to the 950s sound. When playing video games especially, I was treated to a sound that was very tinny and full of distortion, and I played with every sound setting imaginable, both on the PS4 as well as the 950 itself, and I was never really able to get away from this. But even when not gaming, when watching movies on Netflix or Amazon, the sound was just very, very, well, high frequency extra. And the bass itself was just very one note, and there's just this huge gap between them. It was very disjointed, intelligibility was very poor. So at a minimum, at a minimum, you're gonna want to pair the 950 with at least a capable soundbar. And speaking of soundbars, we encountered some control over HDMI as well as ARC and EARC issues when connecting our Samsung soundbars to the Sony itself. Sometimes I would lose all control of the Samsung soundbar via the Sony remote. And this would result in me having to go into the Sony's menus and adjust the various sound settings or just cycle the power. Hopefully when it all came back on, everything worked as advertised. And well, I don't need to tell you this got very annoying. Now, the Sony itself, or by itself, is very responsive. The menus, everything is lightning quick. However, when attempting to control, say, a Samsung soundbar, it got downright sluggish. Now, maybe Sony soundbars are better or more responsive in this respect, but we did not have one on hand to test, so I can't be certain. Speaking of pairing the 950 with other Sony products, I had one heck of a time getting my Sony XM4 headphones to pair with the 950. In fact, it took three attempts for the two products to see one another, and that is two attempts more than it took the Samsung Q70T, which makes no sense to me. I find the XM4s to be rather foolproof in this regard, as terms of usability and syncing with other products, so I would be shocked if this is the fault of the headphones and not the 950. In terms of comparison, the Sony is a lot like another TV that we have recently reviewed on this channel, and that is the Hisense H9G. In fact, the two TVs are so similar, they almost measured exactly the same with respect to grayscale, color fidelity, even light output, though admittedly, the Hisense is a little bit brighter out of the box and has a little bit brighter maximum light output overall, but only just. Both have the same operating system, both have the same connection options or lack thereof. So yeah, they, they really do feel very, very similar. In fact, if it wasn't for the glossy screen on the Hisense, I don't think a lot of people could tell these two TVs apart. But the processor inside the Sony does seem to be a little bit better, a little bit snappier, a little bit more robust, which gives me confidence that over time, it's probably gonna hold up just a little bit better to things like firmware updates. And Hisense users know that over time, their TVs can and do often slow down with updates. So maybe the Sony is a little bit better there. But all things considered, given the savings of the Hisense, I may recommend it over the Sony for most people. Sony fanboys are likely gonna hate me for saying this, but the Sony didn't measure all that differently or outright better than TCL's 6 series. Yes, the Sony is more accurate out of the box with respect to grayscale and color, but the TCL isn't that far off. Now the Sony doesn't have a craptastic Roku OS. It is a bit faster, a little bit more snappy, and it has better video processing, but you can overcome both of those things in the TCL by simply adding an Nvidia Shield and you'll still be saving money even if you do that. On top of it, the TCL doesn't stutter during gameplay, and if I'm being honest, sounds better than the Sony all by itself. 
In comparison to LG's NanoCell lineup, the Sony does have better backlighting control and black level detail straight out of the box. And when it comes to Dolby Vision viewing, I think I do prefer the Sony over the LG. Now the Sony is sharp, we mentioned that earlier, but I, I have to say I find the LG's picture just a little bit more natural and organic in its sharpness, but I understand that this is going to be more of a subjective call. What's not subjective is that motion is straight up better through the LG, especially during gameplay as it stutters not. Also, and I know a lot of you aren't going to rely on the built-in speakers inside a TV, but you have to know that the LG's sound is just stone cold better. So in the end, the Sony X950H is a little bit of a mixed bag for me. On the one hand, television and movies look brilliant through it, especially Dolby Vision content. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. But when it comes to gaming, I would skip this television, which feels kind of weird for me to say because well, I'm just a casual gamer and yet I was let down by the X950H's performance with respect to gaming, but also because we're talking about Sony. Sony who make gaming consoles. And I'm not even talking about the 950 as it relates to a next gen console like a PS5. No, I'm talking about problems gaming on a PS4. So if you're a gamer, I would understand if maybe the 950 wasn't for you, but if you're just looking for a really solid quality TV for television and movie watching, like I said, there's a lot to like, especially when you consider the Sony's out of the box accuracy as it relates to picture quality. So that's it. That is our review of the Sony X950H 4K Smart TV. What'd you guys think? What'd you think? Did you like the TV, dislike the TV? I liked the TV. I actually really liked the television right out of the box. Mm -hmm. I know when we first turned it on, my initial thought was like, oh, that looks really good. And then you immediately changed it. And when you changed it, I was like, well, that doesn't look as good as it did. And then you try to fiddle with it to get it back and it never really was. And so I was kind of disappointed the whole time. But, um, it was good. I mean, I, it's definitely not my favorite TV of the year. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of colors, while the Sony maybe quote, it's more accurate it is. or organic or whatever the hell you want to call it. I just, you know, I'm one of these people that like a lot of pink in my skin. I mean, if you look at my, my editing and photos, like that's just, I usually will bump the red values a little bit or the magenta. Mm -hmm. So it was a little too natural, or I guess, or a little too, too yellow, balanced. too balanced for yeah. me. Okay. Um, I prefer the TCL. I still kind of wish we had that television, although the Roku operating system was so bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just kind of like a meh, meh, meh yeah, TV I mean, to me. Like, it's nothing, it's not bad, and yeah. it's not great. It's just really middle of the road. Well, and, and yeah, it's the middle of the road TV for Sony. And I think that they kind of, they didn't give it all the features to take away from the higher end stuff, but they didn't water it so down as to make it, you know, dirt cheap. I don't know. I mean, you definitely tend to like punchier picture profiles. You definitely tend to like, sorry, Katie just got up now. You definitely tend to like, um, you like magenta, but you also like a you you like a, a blue skew as well. You tend to go for the punchier. You're not vivid, but you I like those Leica colors. You like standard. So whenever I switch a TV to cinema or customer ISF day, which is what you should do for accuracy, she very quickly is, you know, oh, I don't like it any as much because it's not as punchy, it's not as crushed and contrasty. But it is we can't we don't want to take away from the fact that it is more accurate, but much like sound picture is going to be to, it's not subjective. I can actually measure that it is better, but, but what you will likes, like, you what will like, likes yeah, is subjective. It's subjective. So if you like standard, leave it on standard. It's a very nice and pleasing standard. It's nowhere near like eco or dynamic, which are always just, uh. Yeah. Like typically yeah. when we first boot up a t brand new TV yeah. that we get in for review, whatever profile that that television is in, it's typically really bad. Right. But 
that was and that was i think what surprised me about the sony like straight yeah. out of the box i was yeah. like oh this is actually really nice yeah straight out of the box standard is totally watchable it's just not accurate and just, but it was very sharp yeah it was too sharp for me yeah it is a little bit more sharp and standard than say cinema or um, custom custom is just the best setting you should use it really is um but you can adjust the local dimming settings from low, medium, and high to bring some of that punch back. Um, and that, that you can do totally to taste. But it was I had the same feelings about it. It was kind of a solid, very solid TV. There's nothing really overtly bad for it or overtly bad about it unless you're a gamer, in which case I would avoid this television like the plague. Um, it's just hard. I, I actually thought that this was more competitively priced with the high sense, but it's mm -hmm. like four or five hundred dollars more for a sixty-five inch. Oh, really? Yeah. You know what's funny? Yeah. And I'm gonna just completely throw a wrench into your whole review. Um, I actually thought the gaming colors were, in in my opinion, some of the better. But I didn't knock it in this review. I said that the the image is brighter and punchier. I liked that. I have no problem with the gaming colors. The gaming okay. picture itself, I have no problem with. The motion is yeah. horrific. Well, that's kind of that's what I was saying. Like in terms of how the the image looked right. in gaming, it actually I thought looked better for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that doesn't address any anything else honestly i think the gaming mode is just a, a variation of standard probably. which is probably i mean the two are very similar you can't access gaming unless you're using like a, a a console or something that the tv acknowledges as as gaming but um it, it seems almost identical to standard to me mm -hmm. and I, I didn't have a problem it's just a little bit more blue like standard has a very defined blue shift in its grayscale but the colors are, oh, the colors are still pretty bang on. A little bit cooler, but still close. Super poppy. Black levels are excellent. It's just the motion, the motion with gaming is horrendous. And it, and I hooked our console up to all of the different HDMI inputs, and it never got better. It just, it just never got better. So solid, solid TV for movies. And television, especially the fact you can get it up to 85 inches. Um, it's not the cheapest, very large TV. Um, I think 85 is like almost four grand. You can definitely get 85 for less. Um, but yeah, I think a solid TV, just not definitely not product of the year, which is, you know, the yeah. OLED is better in that respect. But I think if people are fans of Sony, and they're used to Sony televisions, they're gonna love the TV, yeah. this TV. Yeah. And it's yeah. probably a great fit for them. you know. But if you were the type of person that's open to other brands and mm -hmm. or has a slightly smaller budget, I think there's other TVs that are just as good, if not marginally better. Or exactly the, the same, but less. For the money. For the right. money, yeah, I, I, okay. So. <laughs> Anyway, that is our review of the Sony X950H. Now it's your turn. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. And our question of the day for you is this. What feature or feature set does a television have to have in order to be considered perfect in your eyes? Let us know. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Uh, reminder, we are still raising money for Feeding America, so please click donate somewhere on your screen and give what you can today and help those less fortunate than yourselves get a meal this Christmas. So far, I think, what are we, over three grand? We're you a guys little have, over three grand. Yeah, you guys have helped to raise over $3,000, so let's let's keep it going, and thank if you. you if, if you can. If you can. And if you can't, if we you can't, understand. It's fine, and no if, judgment. And if you are not in the United States, which... We, not all of our viewers are. The right. majority of them are. But if, if you're outside of the U.S. and you don't want to donate to Feeding America, we understand. We encourage you to find a local charity. Absolutely. Or s something that... Benefits is, your fellow yeah. man or neighbor in their time of yeah. need. How about that? It's just a good thing to do. Yeah. Pay it forward. 
So yes, click donate. 100% of your donation goes to Feeding America if you choose to donate and can spare it. And Christy and I thank you for helping us in this effort. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it. Links down below. Oh, right. Oh, yes. See? Uh, if you use any of the links down below, that is a great way to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And Christy and I thank you very much. So that is it. Now we have got to get out of here and edit this bad boy. So remember, the only person that has to like the sight and sound of your system is you. Happy listening. Happy watching. Thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. But I need some water because my throat is parched. I'm wordy. Yeah, you're wordy. That's what this. That's what the Sony sound <laughs> out of the TV sounds that like. Oh my God, that is how it sounds. It. That is. This is exactly how the Sony speakers sound. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Maybe a little bit higher like this, but it sounds a lot like this. Holy crap. Sony, if you're listening, I figured out how you voice your speakers. You stick all the actors inside a Yeti bottle. <laughs> it's true. I'm, I'm. This is it. This is how it sounds. This is. Do you want that Sony experience? We have movie studios, kids. We make cameras. We make some of the biggest movies. The next Spider-Man, he's going to sound just like this. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever Spider-Man does. <laughs> I will be bringing you the conclusion of this review <laughs> the way Sony would have you hear it. So that's it. That's my review of the Sony X950H. What'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>